all right so we're just working on uh the electrical for the kiln and um <laughs> this is pretty simple I, I mean to me it's simple anyway pretty basic uh we're just running a conduit through the shop wall so this big two inch conduit right here going in or two and a half um this is our main power coming into the shop so our panel is right here we've got a 60 amp coming out to go to the air conditioner um and we just ran this uh cable here which we used a one inch to do that 60 amp for the ac we're actually using a three quarter now and it's going to run a 60 amp for the kiln and a 20 amp um, to go over here for a sewer pump So anyway, we're just getting started piecing this together. I'll show you the inside here in a second, but basically we've just gone through the wall here with a double LB. So we'll be able to take off this faceplate here. We've already got the faceplate off on the inside. So that'll let us feed those wires through. So even though we're in a relatively tight conduit, um, we put these pieces in and we had to do that anyway because trying to do a sweep, um, the sweep would have stuck way out off the building and it would have stuck out too tight inside the wall. So you have to do this LB to be able to make that tight turn and keep everything as flush as possible. Now we're gonna come down and we're gonna put this T right here. I'm sure somebody's gonna scream and cry and tell me this isn't code, but I, I, I don't really care. I don't know if it's, I'm sure there's supposed to be like a, like a formal junction box, but there's not actually gonna be a junction here. There's not gonna be a, a wired connection. This is just, a, again, an access point just to help us fish the wires. So um, even if this little seal leaks, it doesn't matter because there's not going to be any wire nuts in here. There's not going to be any breaks in the wire. It's just turning a corner. So anyway, this little T is going to go in. And then of course that's going to tee off. Like I said, one side goes out that way with a 20 amp. This side goes this way over to the kiln. And then the actual conduit for the electrical under the kiln is going to run just like how the plumbing does. It's just going to be a pipe laying on the slab and just run underneath the edge of the unit. So we're uh, letting the glue set up right now. My wife already went ahead and foamed around this. Uh, I'm gonna see if I can go find some silicone. I'll put some silicone around the outside so we'll make sure that's already done right away. We've got a little break in the rain today, I think, to this afternoon. So we wanted to get that penetration made and get it sealed up again before it started raining. Let me get that stuff taken care of and then I'll give you a little update as we go. All right, well, I'll give you a little update here. I'm pulling the wires and I'll tell you what I just did. That was a huge mistake, so you guys don't make the same mistake. I had gone ahead and glued on this vertical pipe and the T. Trying to feed those wires, I wanted to feed them up through the T, like up through the box this way, just so I only had to feed in, you know, like four or five feet through the conduit and then bring the rest inside. But I could not, there was not enough space against the ground for me to shove them up and in and work them up and in. So I ended up pushing all the wires through the wall into the shop, then having to come down through this LB and out through the T and I was able to do that by standing, putting my toe on it and pulling it down about three or four inches at a time while keeping the top up here as, as high up as I could. Uh, I had to put some Vaseline in there to grease things up a little bit, so that helped. Um, but you can still see my wires, they're all muddy. Everything has just turned into an absolute muddy, nasty mess. I mean, I've got me a piece of metal to walk on here, but you can see the mud just oozing out from under it. Um, but yeah, it's just turned into a muddy, nasty mess. And so I'm sure all that mud and sand grit being drugged through the conduit isn't helping anything. But anyway, we've got a little bit of excess here that I'm cautiously optimistic that we'll be able to pull that back through into the shop and that I've still got enough here. I mean, we're laid out, we're laid out to here and we've only got to go to that back corner and up. And you can see we've got uh, excess wire all over there. And it loops around here and goes back. So I think we've got more than enough. And so we're going to keep feeding. Um, I just managed to wrestle this piece of pipe on here and get this fitting glued up, which was an absolute pain just trying to work in behind that big two and a half inch. Um, I say two and a half inch, it's three. I don't even know anymore. It's big. Trying to work in behind that big conduit uh, and get that little one to go into the sleeve, which was also all covered in mud. It just was, it was hard. I'm complaining. 
Anyway, the rest of it hopefully will be a little bit easier. We'll just start on the ends of the wire and just snake our fittings on until we get up to the connection and then glue them up and roll with it. So hopefully the worst is passed. I just wanted to give that little tip. Do not, <laughs> do not glue that stuff on yet. In hindsight, I should have um, run my wires all through the T and up through that short piece of pipe and then glued it once I got it all up in there. But anyway, it is what it is. We've pulled past it now. <laughs> you didn't get one, did you? You're always in the wrong spot. If you ch oh, stay well in one spot. If you chase it, you'll never get one. You got to stay in one spot and wait. Okay, so we got our conduit laid across up there. I got one. And all the way down along here and finally tied in to the box. So, yeah, certainly uh, the joint over here on the other side that I was talking about was absolutely the worst. Uh, I fought with this whole mess over here for probably close to an hour and then did all the rest of that in like 15 minutes. So we are hooked up, or at least the wires are all around to the back of the kiln. So now we'll go in the shop and feed the wires the other way up into the panel. I guess I can take the little 12 gauge wires here that go out for the 20 up. I can stuff those out the side of that T and then go ahead and put the cover back on the T. I think we've got enough wire in the shop so we can go ahead and close up the T and we can go ahead and close up the LB. And that way we're sealed at least from the outside again. We can finish all of our work outside but not have holes in the wall of the shop. All right, so we've got our wires all stuffed in here now at the junctions. I say junctions, there's not actually a junction there, but at the turn points, the LBs and the T. You see, we've still got our 20 gauge just laid out here across the ground. It's fine. It's not hooked up inside the panel. It's just pulled out there out of the way. We don't have enough conduit. We're out of conduit for now, so that's going to stay how it is. Coming around the back of the kiln, again, you can see the wire, the conduit runs just lays right under the edge of the kiln, just enough that we're not tripping over it. Oh, here comes the rain. Woo! And then back here, we've come in, and we come up on our main switch, which I didn't, I mean, maybe I showed that to you guys earlier when it was open, but it's really nothing crazy special. It's just the two black wires in the ground. They're each hooked up to their appropriate terminals. Uh, this thing can be wired for three phase. But basically inside of here, there was three uh, hot points and three on the bottom. But the two, two black wires were in here. So I put the two black wires on top there and left the outside one unhooked. I think, I think you'd hook up the outside one, obviously, if you had it hooked for three phase, but I'm not sure on that. I'm going to double check the instructions. I don't think the, like the wiring diagram didn't really say. It just said hook up the electricity. Like it didn't say... I got to see if there's even actually a diagram for it to specify. But anyway, I just took black to black the way it was. And then the ground was over here on the side. Doggone it. It's freaking pouring rain now. And I'm kind of stuck under this tarp. Anyway, so <clears throat> the electrical out here is done. I'm going to try to run to the shop. And um, that's the last thing I got to do is hook it up in there. So let me go show you in there. All right. Might be a little noisy in here with the rain coming down. But basically, there's our final LB. The wires are turned. They're all coming up here in the box. So we were able to fit everything through the three quarter, which was three six gauge wires and three 12 gauge wires. We was able to fit it through the three quarter just fine, honestly. Sure, one inch would have been easier, but three quarter worked okay. The 12 gauge wires for the 20 amp, we just pulled them over here to the side. I've got my white wire just, just twisted off. It's gonna hook in here at the main bus. My red is my black effectively on my main uh, hot wire. And then my green ground will hook up up here on the ground bus. Our six gauge wires we've got run over here. The two hots are pulled out right now. And the ground, we've actually already hooked it up on the ground bus on that side. So these two hots, they're gonna lay right up here on top. This panel is live right now, so I gotta be careful. But we're gonna run these two right up there basically over that next position. I've got the 60 amp breaker. I just don't have time to hook it up right now. I've gotta go check in the Connex box and see if there's a 20. I honestly don't think I have one. We had some spares laying around. So there's a 60 and a 50. I think we've got like some 20 amp, but I think they're home lines. I don't think they're square D QOs. Uh, so well, I might have to go to the store and see if I can find a, a QO somewhere without driving all the way to town, but I'm probably gonna have to go to town. Anyway, that's it for now. So we're down to the nitty gritty as far as the kiln. I've still got to hook up some uh, plumbing on it. 
but at least the main, the hardest part of the electrical is done. Hooking in this last breaker won't take me five minutes. So now when the rain cuts off, I'll be back out there gluing PVC to finish the water line. And then we'll be able to finally turn it on. I mean, at this point, hook up the breaker, I could turn it on at least just to play with the computer and see it. I just can't run it without the water line. So we'll go ahead and get the water line hooked up too. All right, well, we got the wall put back together finally. I'll show you inside our glorious panel here. Our new 60 amp breaker is still off for right now, although there's no reason why we couldn't turn it on. Um, and of course, we've got it labeled up for the kiln. So the other, the 20 amp that's going outside will go here. Like I showed you guys earlier, the wire is coiled up inside. But we can take this panel off without having to take this whole uh, piece of OSB off the wall. We actually <laughs> planned that much correctly when we were designing the shop that this piece of OSB is screwed on. Everything else is nailed on because we've had to take this panel off several times to work inside the panel, the electrical panel. So that's smart, but let me take you outside and I'll show you the final connections on the electrical and plumbing. Okay, so coming outside again, the final electrical, I think I already showed you guys that. And then the final plumbing, uh, we'll run down underneath the edge of the kiln. And it turns, goes across the back here. You can see that little half inch sticking up so that's actually the water supply into the kiln and then i let it go on out past i'll show you that here in a second that two inch line you see sticking down just to the left of the half inch that's actually um, the drain off of the vacuum pump and then there's another drain you can't see but it's just passing another two inch line uh, and that's actually the the vessel drain so i will get i gotta get some elbows and um i'm gonna have to do streets I have to get some little short elbow and a T and take that two inch out the other side. That big muffler there, that's exactly what it is. That's the muffler. So when that vacuum pump is running, I guess it's kind of noisy. So they got a big muffler. Okay, so the inch and a quarter line comes out here. I've got that ball valve open for right now. So once this glue sets, I'm going to open the valve over there in the uh, access panel or the access hatch, whatever you want to call it, irrigation hatch. And I'm going to let this whole thing just blast through for about a minute and flush any sort of debris and dirt out. And there's a chance it'll flush some of that debris, you know, up into that little half inch line. Um, but there's an electronic valve just right inside there <coughs> that should be closed right now that'll open when the vacuum pump turns on. So I'll flush it for a minute, shut it off, let that little half inch line kind of drain out, flush it again. I'll surge it a couple times, just try to knock out anything I can uh, to really clean this line out. And then we'll shut that ball valve in and that'll have us supplied to pressure test everything. Again, the two inch line there. And the other one, there's the other one right there, peeking down at us. So we'll tie those two two inches together. And then I'm just gonna run a line, basically just out here into the woods, basically to the property line, just to try to get that effluent away from the back of the shop. I mean, as it is right now, it can just drain out here on the slab and it will run off right here. But I don't want to have, if I can help it, I don't want to have constant muddy mess back here behind the kiln because of course it is going to breed mosquitoes so we're going to run that two inch out that way for right now we had talked about maybe running it out and around to the pond maybe we will maybe we won't but that's not critical for right now the important thing is just to get it out there away from the shop so uh that's pretty much it i mean the kiln is ready to rock uh i guess i go flip that breaker on just to see if anything explodes but otherwise we're waiting on the glue to set up now before we flush and pressure test the plumbing system. So pretty much done, just waiting on glue.